This is Walking Your Talk, a podcast about leadership, authenticity, and courage. I'm Carolyn Taylor. Over my career, I've worked with well over 100,000 leaders in every kind of organization, people who are committed to closing the gap between their own values and those of their organization and how they show up every day. I wrote a book called Walking the Talk on how you change corporate culture, but this is much more personal. If you want to be known as someone who walks their talk, then this podcast is for you. Asking is an underrated skill which many of us avoid. This is the second of a series of episodes on accountability. And in this episode, I want to focus very particularly on the role of the person who is intending to hold another to account. Somebody, when you're in that role where you want something, you're, you're wanting somebody else to deliver something to you, and you're trying to work out what is the best way to achieve that. In the first episode, I talked about the fact that there are four elements to the accountability equation. There is the role of the asker and the role of the giver. There is a role of what happens before the promise is made, the commitment is made, the contract, if you like, is signed up, and what happens afterwards. Today, we're going to go more deeply into what is the role of the asker. And before we do this, I I feel I need to um, disclose a little bit of personal experience on this because uh, I've found that for myself, but also for many other leaders who I coach, that the very act of asking is actually quite confronting in many ways and touches into many of our deeper beliefs about what is and isn't okay behavior. I remember years ago, I went on a fascinating personal development program where they had this exercise where they took away our handbags, our our, our money, and they sent us out in the street for, I think we had three or four hours. And the task was to come back having had a great meal. And really the only tool that was available to us was to ask, to go up, to find people and to say, would you buy me a meal? Well, I just could not do that. I I remember walking up and down the pavement outside of the hotel room where the the program was going saying, I simply can't do this. I will do everything apart from ask. I will dance around. I'll make a good impression. I'll hint. But to actually sit down and ask someone just directly brought up all sorts of things going through my head, little voices that were going through my head that it wasn't, wasn't okay to do that. But I had somebody just recently say to me that her pattern that she'd learned from way back in childhood was, the more you ask, the less you'll get. You can just imagine a parent saying that to a child and what that does to us. So most of us have got, you know, what I'll call a little bit of baggage around asking. And so we have various tricks and other mechanisms that we use to not have to do that. And this becomes very relevant when we talk about accountability. Because most people would say, well, why would I need to ask? I'll just tell people what I want. And that's a technique that many people use. Many people don't even tell. They just send out an email. You know, I expect everybody to have this back to me by this date. And sometimes they have enough authority in their role that they can get away with that. But there's always a cost. And the cost is that the person you're asking doesn't really feel enrolled in that process. They don't really feel that they have given you their true commitment. Whereas if you do have the courage to ask and you're able to engage in a conversation about, can I count on you to do this? Can you do this? And the other person can come back and say, yes, yes, you can count on me. Then at that moment, it's no longer you telling them what to do. It's them actually having made a commitment to you, yes, but also made a commitment to themselves. And so what you evoke there is something about honor, You know, I am a person who keeps their word. So when somebody gives their word to you, that is what you're evoking. So it really is worth the time to get to that point if you possibly can. So yeah, one set of people fall into telling. Another set of people fall into, I'll say, hinting. So for example, my partner often says that, you know, I will leave a bag of garbage by the back door and say nothing more. There's a kind of implicit hint of, Ah, you know, if you're going out to the garage, you know, maybe you could take this out. But there's never a, it's not a clear request. It's just a kind of a hint. And of course, the danger of the hints is that often there is a misaligned expectation. So perhaps I think that I have been clear and I've asked. But in fact, when you ask the other person, they never had that clear request made of them. And in fact, we find later on when we look at 
where there is a breakdown and where one party expects something to be delivered and it wasn't delivered, that almost always it comes from that initial commitment conversation where one person thought they asked, but in fact the other person never heard it or never heard the specificity, or they thought that they were being asked to do something that could take a month, but in fact the asker was meaning that they wanted to be done within a week, or they thought that they wanted a particular level of detail and the other person thought it was a lesser level of detail. And then you start to have a breakdown. I said before that I was going to really look at, or help us all look at, what it takes to build trust. And one of the things that helps you build trust more than anything is making and keeping your word. And if you want others to make and keep their word to you, then you've got to learn this art of making a request, because that is what evokes the willingness and the ability of someone else to make a promise. So when, of course, you do make a clear request, and a clear request sounds something like, in order to do X, Y, Z, I would like you to do A, B, C. Can I count on you to do that? Can I count on you to do this piece of research and get it back to me next Friday so that I can deliver this report? Now, when you ask like that, of course, you do open the possibility that the other person will say no. But how much better is it really to know that they can't or they think they can't deliver it at the beginning so that you've got an opportunity to have a conversation about can we find some way by which you could do it or perhaps you find some other way of getting what you want? So at least if you have the direct conversation, you've got a possibility of solving it. Whereas when you don't have the conversation, you then get all these unexpected surprises at the end. And we tend to blame the other person, say, well, it was their fault. But in fact, it probably goes back to my skill at making those clear requests. So people will often ask, when I talk about asking in this way, they'll say, but but what about the role of a leader to stretch their people? Surely if I just ask, people will dumb it down. They will, they will bring it down to a lower denominator. And my role is to set goals that are higher than people think that they can necessarily achieve. And that, of course, is an important role, particularly in that leader-subordinate role, that particular accountability relationship. At the same time, though, just by telling people these are going to be the big goals, what you don't surface are their doubts. By wording it more as a request, What you hear from the other person is, oh, I don't think I can promise that. I don't feel confident to promise that. And the follow-up question, of course, would be, so what would it take for you to feel you could promise it? And by asking that question, you hear immediately where the areas of risk are, where the areas of doubt are, where the trade-offs are going to be, which then puts you in a position to have a really meaningful conversation about how could we overcome those. And I've actually found that that technique, I've done it often with a whole team where they go around the room and go, okay, so can I count on you to deliver this? Can I count on you to deliver that? And you hear from people where they are confident and who isn't confident. And suddenly you open up this whole conversation about where the risks are in a team to whether or not they can deliver on what they've committed to. And then other people can start contributing and to say, well, maybe that person isn't feeling completely confident, but I feel like I could over-deliver. And so you begin to get the team taking some mutual responsibility for what's possible. I've maintained all the way through this that even though asking may seem a strange skill, perhaps, in relation to certain accountable relationships, what it evokes is a real conversation. And the real conversation is where you start to get to the hub of what what it will take to deliver what we want to deliver. So the exercise today in the role of the asker is to practice asking and to do a couple of things. First of all, make sure you're asking the right person. So is this person who actually could deliver something to me? Secondly, then to be very specific, much more specific than instinctively you think you need to be. And thirdly, to keep asking. If it matters to you and you don't get you what you want originally, maybe ask somebody else or maybe ask in a different way or ask for some different quantity. And finally, to mix it up a bit, not to give up. Many of us, I think, ask once or twice and we get a no and we kind of give up. But in fact, the skill, the ability to ask well and not to feel rejected when we don't get what we want is the beginning of true accountability, of being somebody who confidently knows that others will deliver to you. 
So that's the exercise for this week. And in the next podcast, we're going to look at the other role. So next week, we're going to look at the role of the giver and what and when should you give your word and what should you do before you give your word and how do you actually build a reputation for being somebody who does actually do what they say they're going to do, which is a wonderful reputation to have. So please join me for that next week. And thank you for listening today.